All right, so we're moving on, and uh, this is on the far bar uh, as is 5, which was revised in 4 of 17. And this uh, particular uh, session is going to cover section 3. Remember, we're teaching this section by section. Once again, let me reiterate, one uh, uh, as I do every time we teach a section, uh, we're doing this, breaking them out, this down piece by piece. Every part of this contract is important. Every part is written on purpose. And there are reasons why it's there. Basically, it's from former lawsuits that have created uh, the need for a certain clause. So they try and make this as clear as possible. Remember, our goal on every contract we write or we receive or we negotiate is at the end of the day, if someone found this line on the ground and had no idea who was and who said what and who thought what, that the contract would speak for itself. And that's the whole logic behind having this done and why it's so lengthy. Uh, we want to make sure we cover as many things as possible. All right, so we're going to uh, focus on section three, which is time for acceptance of offer and counteroffers and the effective date. Uh, let's just read it carefully. I highlighted pretty much the whole thing. Part A says, if not signed by buyer and seller and an executed copy delivered to all parties on or before, by the way, let's cover it delivered. All right, that means it's not only executed, but delivered. So execution is one thing that means that the seller and or the buyer have the seller signed the offer we we made or they countered it and the buyer has now initialed those counters or whatever it is but not only executing it has to be has to occur but delivering meaning we have to deliver to all the parties um, and so that would mean delivery to uh, the listing agent in this case because the contract later on will read that if we deliver it to the listing agent it is as if we delivered it to the seller so anyway so don't just think sign it you have to sign it and deliver it to all parties on or before, in this case, I put uh, January or uh, April 6, 2017. You want to put a time frame in here. Do not leave. I see this all the time where people leave this part blank and it basically leaves a an open ended offer out there that there is no formal um, uh, termination of the offer. At that point, the seller technically could continue to receive offers, continue to keep the house on the market, and then say, okay, well, I'll come back to you in two weeks if you don't formally withdraw this. All right, we'll talk about that in a second. So put a date in there, all right? Now, again, if you represent the buyer, the shorter the time period, the better. This A longer term times uh, available for seller to um, uh, uh, respond to an offer only benefits the seller because the only thing that can happen is more offers can come in. If your buyer has decided to make an offer, get it and get it in there and say, oh, look, we know what? And they say, oh, the seller's out of town and they're difficult to get a hold of. And well, guess what? You need to get a hold of them because we have an offer on their home and we can't wait around because I don't want this dangling out there forever. So my opinion is I used to a lot um, put very, very short time periods in there and try and force the issue. Um, so if we don't hear back from them, the seller doesn't sign it and deliver back to us, this offer shall be deemed withdrawn and the deposit, if any, shall be returned to the buyer. So if they made a deposit with the offer. Unless otherwise stated, time for acceptance of any counteroffers shall be within two days after the day the counteroffer is delivered. Let's talk about that for a second. So the seller's not satisfied with this. They're not going to reject the offer, but they are going to counter it. So they mark out some things. By the way, Everybody talks all the time, and I hear this. This is one of the biggest beefs we have from uh, agents from other companies complaining to us and or um, our agents complaining that they did verbal negotiations and everybody had agreed to it, and now the seller has received another offer and they don't want to um, uh, um, hold themselves accountable to the offer that they had agreed to verbally. All contracts must be in writing to be enforceable, all right? Even email negotiations back and forth does nothing. Who are the parties of a contract? A buyer and a seller. All right, it's not the agent. So an agent telling you, hey, look, no problem. The seller says we're good to go. That's great. You need to get that signed, changed if you need to, initialed and signed by all parties so that all parties can acknowledge that we have a meeting of the minds because that's what a contract is. All right? So... Let's say, though, in this case, that the seller decided this wasn't enough and we're going to counter that offer. If they did nothing and just scratched out some things, this line here on line 46 says that 
our time, the, the buyer's time to accept that counteroffer will be two days after the counteroffer is delivered. All right. My suggestion is at the end of the contract, I'm going to flip to the end of the contract real quickly and show you where two points. And we'll cover this later when we talk about signing the contract. If I skipped over it, sorry about that. Nope, I didn't. Sorry. It is here where the seller uh, can sign somewhere. Maybe it's the previous page. Maybe it's up here. Sorry about that. Should have had this arranged ahead of time. I don't know if I'm skipping over or not. Here we go. Let's hang on. Sorry about that. Let's see. I just looked at it before I came in, but... Um, There is a spot. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Line 589. I knew it was there. Counter offer or rejection. Seller will check this box. Counters buyer's offer to accept the counter offer. Buyer must sign or initial the counter offer terms and deliver a copy of the acceptance to the seller. So that you can check that box. Now, if you do nothing else, that's going to say that the buyer has 48 hours. I myself, in this case, would check it and write in because just like the buyer doesn't want to leave an offer out there hanging too long, neither does the seller. A counter offer is a, an offer from the seller. And I would write in here, this counter offer is valid uh, uh, only until 5 p.m. on April 7th, da, 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 and you would and, and make a specific time and date. All right. Or here's a spot where the seller rejects the buyer's offer. Many times people make an offer and it gets no one um, uh, uh, responds and the buyer's agent is fearful that the offer never was delivered. This is a way for you to insist that you get something signed, you know, by checking that box that the seller rejects it. They say, well, the seller's rejected it. We'll say, okay, that's great. But can you have the seller check that box and sign it? Because I want to make sure that the seller is the one that's rejecting it and has been, uh, has seen this offer. So that's a way to do that. All right. So, Remember, that's where you can um, uh, change the two days uh, if you counter offer and or just make it very clear when you counter offer. Say, hey, this counter offer is only valid until such and such a time and date. The effective date, this is part B, the effective date of this contract should be the date when the last one of the buyer and seller has signed an initial to deliver this offer or final counter offer. So we, the buyer makes this offer, the seller counters back, they give them one day. When the buyer comes back and initials those changes and agrees to them and or other changes, but if you could be back and forth several times, that becomes the effective date. And the effective date is very important because that's when the time clock starts ticking for inspections and uh, loan approval deadlines and so on and so forth. So just realize that. One last thing, and I'll let you go, is that any time, all right, Prior to this, let's say the buyer put this in here in 4, 6, 17 at 12 p.m. And on 4, 5, another property came up that they wanted to see and they loved it, everything else. The seller has not responded and had not executed and delivered. Then the buyer may withdraw their offer by delivering written notice, i.e. you put something in writing, have the buyer sign it forward that. I would call the listing agent, text them, email them, everything, all of the above that the buyer is withdrawing their offer on this such and such a property. Likewise, the seller, if say they put it in here with two days um, as a counter offer, anytime in, during that counter offer, they can pull that counter offer off the table by delivering written notice as well that the seller is elected to withdraw their counter offer. If um, the seller had signed it, executed, and delivered, all right, prior to then and prior to anybody noting that they've withdrawn the offer, then the buyer and the seller are under my contract and the terms of the contract will uh, be in effect. All right, so I think I should do it. It's amazing I could take 10 minutes to cover that, but there are some things that are some uh, tricky spots. Um, most of you may already know that, but if you're a brand new agent, these are things that uh, you will come across. So hope this is all helping. And um, again, section three of the new FAR bar as is five that was revised on 417.